Hi, that's Instructor Bros, and this is how to make a band hammer that actually bans somebody so that they cannot join you. To create a band hammer, first of all, what we need to do is have a tool and then call that something like band hammer. In here, we will add a mesh part, which we're gonna make be our band hammer. At least that's how I'm going to have my object. I just made it in Blender because that's, in my opinion, the best way to make a tool one. Just quickly importing the whole thing. Then what we need is, as this will not be able to be held, we have to in here add a regular part, which we have to exactly spell like this called handle. And then what we have to do is we have to position this there where we want to have the player's hand end. Then what we'll do is we'll make this transparent because we don't want to see this and use a weld constraint to attach it. Then what we will do is we will create a GUI which will be used to ask if the person with the band hammer is sure he wants to ban a player. We and I have already pre-made it, but all it has is in the string joy, it has a value called play to ban, the string value. In and then also in the string joy, there's a frame in which there are two buttons, N and Y, and a text label. It's important that we have these. This is the simplest part. We just add a local script, have a script dot parent dot mouse button dot click colon connect function. This just fires us every time this gets clicked, and then we do strip the parent the parent the parent colon destroy. That's just a no button, so that if a player isn't supposed to be banned, it just quickly closes the UI. Then in the Y, we have to add a local strip, which is a bit more complicated. Here we first of all also have the strip the parent the must click function. And we also have this line, but we before that have to in replicate the storage at a remote event, which we will simply call ban event. And then we just need to fire this so game the replicate storage dot ban event colon fire server, and we just input strip the parent the parent the parent dot player to ban dot value so that it sends the name of the person to be banned which is bound to be there then what we have to do is in the in our ban we have to just quickly insert this UI all the way into our ban hammer we should call it ban check or something like that and in the ban hammer we will add yet another local script here we will first of all start with two variables local plr equals to game dot player dot local player and then local mouse equals to plr colon get mouse so the player just gets the player that the local script is executing on and then the mouse we just get based off our player and we have to then get as soon as the mouse gets clicked so for that we use mouse dot button one down to connect function in here we create array local array equals to array dot new this wants two values the origin and the direction the origin will be script dot parent dot handle dot position and the second one will be mouse dot dot p not that hit but dot p is just what the mouse is basically clicking on then we make a variable local part comma pause so this is the position and the part of how we get it here we are and this is equal to workspace colon find part on ray and then here we just input our ray so this gets the part and where and the position of where the ray hits what we then do is we check if part and this is just to see did the ray actually hit something? Because if we hit, uh, click in the sky, then nothing would hit, then it would give an error if we continue not caring about that. Then we have to check if gain the players colon get player from character part dot parent, because we'll probably 
we will only hit a body part, if at all. And then its parent would be the whole character, so we have to check if a player's character is the descendant of the part we hit. And now we need to, first of all, get a variable local plr to ban equals to, and we just can quickly copy this line of code. Then we have to make a variable of the clone GUI, so local GUI equals to script the parent got a ban check colon clone because as we know we will be deleting these GUIs so it's important that we first of all clone it and that's enough for the variables now we want to change something first of all GUI dot player to ban dot value equals to player to ban dot name so this will be because Later on, we'll be using this value, as we know, because we're sending it through the mode event. So we have to, first of all, set it. Then what we want to do is say UI.frame.textLabel.text equals to, um, in quotation marks, are you sure you want to ban space dot dot behind the quotation marks player to ban dot name dot dot quotation marks this is permanent and for the last we have to do gui dot parent equals to plr dot player gui we're done with stuff on our client now what we have to do is on the server so in service for service we're going to insert a script and in this script first of all we will call it ban script. First of all, we'll make a variable for all the admins so that no hacker can execute the load the remote event and we'll be able to ban anyone. So first of all, local admins equals to in square in these brackets and then in quotation marks we have to add the username of an admin and to, if we have multiple we will separate it with a comma and add another. And another variable will be local vs for data store is game colon get service data store service then get data store and that's just band player data store quite a long one. Then we will have to receive the event which will be fired when you press on the yes button. So that is game dot replicate store dot ban event the on server event colon at function and then first of all we get the person who triggers it and then the player that is to be banned we can name these here however we want then we want to check was this function executed by an admin or not so we'll have to do if table dot find in the table admins does it find plr.name so does it find the person that executed it from the client in our admins table what we will then do is we will have to add a proper variable of our player to be banned because this is just a string currently so local plr to be banned equals to game dot players in square brackets ban player what we will then do is we will create a key, local key equals to plr to be banned.user id because we will have to make a unique key. I have actually created a video where I exactly explain how data source works, but here we then use the dot dot and in quotation marks dash banned. And that is the key with that we save if that person is banned or not. Then we do ds colon set async with the key so that it knows with what it will save it and then true so that way it will save that this key is true and then we just have to kick the player so you are to be banned colon kick with our own custom message you have complete control over how, what this message says and to make sure that the player cannot join again what we have to do is we have to do game the players the player added colon connect function plr that joined so this will fire every time when a player joins and then we get his variable 
What we then do is we copy over our key. Then we make a new variable local is ban. Also, this is incorrect because this has to just be pure. Then we have to do a p call function is banned equals to es colon get async p. So now we will set the nil variable of is banned to if the true or, or nil because either it's saved that he is true, so banned, or nil that he isn't banned. Now what we want to check is is banned is not equal to nil then here we just quickly check if is then equals equals to true then so if he's then we're sure that we don't want him to join so we do plr colon tick you're still banned because this way as soon as the band player tries to join the game he will be ticked again saying hey you're still not allowed to join so let's see if this works so what we first have to do is we have to publish our game because else we don't have access to data store. Now what we have to do is in game settings security enable studio access to API services. Now I won't be instantly uh, banning myself just to, to show how it, that it works. But first you don't have to be banned. So currently I'm able to join. Now if I take the ban hammer, this is what still bugs me. It's really hard to actually click the player, but as we can see, the no button works perfectly. Now if we press yes, yeah, it cheats us, first of all. You are banned. But let's see, if we leave and player again, player again, you're still banned. Yeah, but I'm, there is a very hard way to unban a player. And uh, I will put that into the description of this video of how you can unban a player. So, I'm stripped of blocks. This was how you can make a ban hammer that actually bans a player. And I'll hopefully see you in the next video. Bye!